Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury CC3 and Flores, fourteen. And Hi. we are going to bring you the January 2015 Zero K tournament. This is a tournament, as usual. We're doing this every month for the last year now. Actually, this is the second year we've been doing this. And we're going to be starting yeah. off with a game between Flaccid and Kane. Let's go over the brackets briefly. So we have Flaccid versus Kane is the first one. Only round one because of the awkward number of players. That is going to be on New Yamas. It's a Evolution RTS map. After that's going to be round two with whoever happens to be available at the time. We'll see when we get to it. That'll be on Intersection, I believe. Yes, that'll be on Intersection. And then we'll go from there. And That's what it is. Why am I not in the game? Just one time, uh, this map, just for the first round. Yes, Mr. Flesset, two people are streaming for you. Yeah, we're streaming, but there seems to have been a slight technical issue. I can't, I can't seem to join. That's a minor issue. That's not a minor issue. I'm streaming. <laughs> I have to show it to people. No, that's anything but you minor. You can do the talking. You just say random things. Okay, Kane is starting Strider Hub. Ah, uh, close. It has legs. <laughs> so you're not in okay. the game, okay? No, zero K or zero... oh, whatever. It's gonna. Oops, I'm gonna log in. I don't want to quit. Then I'll uh, take over your uh, the lobby. I'll have they started. Let them make them make sure they don't start. No, they they're playing. What? Yeah, they started, but you oh, put it to it yet. Damn it! Yeah, it's okay. Just, wait just... for me. Seriously, yeah, it's like when we first started, and I had to fight tooth and nail to get people to actually wait for me in streams. Uh it's okay. Just just rejoin or restart. You need to restart the lobby. Why? Huh. The game wasn't properly downloading for whatever reason. I restarted the lobby. Hopefully that'll help. Okay. But it wouldn't let me join the game. I don't know it's, why. It's a warm-up round anyway. <clears throat> Next round, the tournament starts. Oh? Yeah, I'm just filling up space here. Wait, filling I'm confused. Up. No, you should be. <laughs> hey, let's see. Um, yeah, I wanted to make a... Um. Oh. Oh boy, that's lag. Okay, well, let's see. I can I can join now, so I'll just then and hopefully it'll get all sorted. They weren't even pausing for you, they were pausing for Google Frog. <laughs> uh, no respect. <laughs> like, they don't want to bring me eSport or something. No. But you're here now, right? I'm just loading. Okay. Anyway, we got one Cloaky versus Shields, both starting out with a couple of Raiders. Flesset wants to make a lot of bandits, but he doesn't keep them together. He sends them in three different directions. But the glaives aren't together either, so those bandits should have a small advantage. <coughs> okay. And that's what they have. Oh, whoops. R R UI are you is... getting? No, mm -hmm. my UI is just oh, okay. my player version UI. I've got to, I've got to change that at some point. Okay, that's one clave down for Keen. But uh, Keen does have a constructor out, so does Flesset. None of them had put down any turrets. That's quite remarkable. Apart from this one LT. Okay, there we go. Okay, so yeah, Flesset. You might notice, yeah, you can get up here. 
Okay, so Flossum in the West. I should probably go over the map though, just because I don't think anyone's seen this map before. Uh, I don't know. It's not one I'm fa that familiar with. I've seen it a few times with Evo, but Evolution RTS isn't super popular. Anyway, so this map is a fairly large map, originally designed for Evolution RTS, but being used here, it's large, full of metal, all plus 2.3, actually fairly high metal. Got it's very much like intersection with the way the ramps are laid out, though with much more flexibility in the way the ramps are laid out. Instead of just being the sections and the corners, it has plenty of areas throughout the map that you can set up defenses and set up bots. Actually, this is a neat design. It really is, yes. That's quite cool, actually, I've got to be honest. This, the center is still vulnerable. You have a nice, nice incentive to take the corners if you wanted to, and there's also these little defensible regions, which are kind of handy. Anyway, that's... Unfortunately, I haven't seen the map played much, so I can't give a whole lot of historical analysis on how people tend to play it. I can I've seen it mostly in bigger team games. Yeah, it and is... And in XTA. It is definitely not a popular map for 1v1, though I think... I think hmm. there's enough metal that... It, or enough spread between metal that it could actually work decently well. Yeah, I think it could work. And there's enough ways um, of getting around that you can avoid getting spotted. It's not like the comets where you end up you go on the sides and it just becomes this big front line. I mean, you can't really easily establish a front line with all this terrain. Well, I suppose you could. Not as easy, though. Anyway. We'll see what the players make out, make of it. We have only one game on this map, though. So... Yes, that's true. It's kind of unfortunate. I mean, it's the one downside of having that one extra player as I made round one. Would have liked to see this map explored a lot more. We'll see uh, it in the next tournament. Anyway. I see, uh, again, spread out bandits and grouped up glaives. Um, yeah, this this line is way too thin on Flaccid's side. I mean, the bandits can basically punch in anywhere. Or sorry, the glaives can punch in anywhere, and they'll have only one bandit to deal with. And we see exactly. that's exactly what's going to happen right now as Kane rushes in through the center and through the north, both at the same time, takes the north with no problem, takes the center with no problem, losing one glaive in the process, and decides to just flank the bandits as well, tearing apart the rest of the line. I do not understand what Flaccid's strategy was with this, but... Kane broke that line no problem, and yet isn't taking advantage of it. Just wanted to kill some bandits. Yeah, that's all. But not uh, a bad Flaccid idea. Has four just... mixes. Yeah, he had a small army disadvantage where he, which gap he uh, now uh, ah, closed. Now Kane is putting in armor pressure. value. Kane's putting some pressure on the north. The south is remaining constant, but the north does have three glaives going in. This is a good move. I mean, the f the six glaives. Yeah. I can see why Kane held them back. You don't want to sacrifice that, especially not at the stage of the game. Three Glaives, however, is a bit less risky. You can throw them in there, see what's going on. The information is worth it. There is, however, an can, LT. I, and Three Glaives actually uh, can take down LTs and such. They can alone, but unfortunately the bandits are coming in to support the, light, the yes. Lotus, and that will stop this attack cold. The There's time, a, another fight going in the south. Not quite. They were they wanted to push forward, see if there's anything they, can, they could see. So Kane right, oops, Kane right now knows about this lotus or what do they know they know about that lotus but i don't see it on their ghost buildings for some bizarre reason yeah they, they know about this lotus over here they don't really know much about anything else so unfortunately i can't say too much about what kane knows right now but they are trying to find out what they can going to the south very strong might group. Do here. doesn't doesn't glaze going to the south not able to, not going for the constructors, not going for the convicts at all. And instead, just going straight think... forward. This fight is going way, it's going for the glaives. And that's. Yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, that convict's going down. Bandits coming in on all sides. I mean, Flaccid, once again, their, their troops have been way too spread out this entire time. The bandits are trying to spread too thin to defend a line too long. And the glaives are just punching the weak points, which. Where is, is the roach? There were, oh, it's in the south. Yeah, there's that roach over here, which is expecting a southern attack, but not going to go for it. Kane, there's no reason to do that. The center has been free, although at this point, these glaives are on a suicide run. That's seven glaives so far. Actually, 12 glaives coming in here. He will manage from here on. But now his constructors are vulnerable. Yeah, and Drone, you and me both. Um, we are both sad this is the only Kane game Kane is on this really map. focusing on one point on the map. He only keeps all his glaives together all the time, or he tries and to. That's, and that has been working very well, though. Right now, it's going to be tricky. This choke point... Looks like it is going to work in favor of Flaccid. I would be so yeah. afraid of a uh, Roach if I move in there. 
I I am surprised they didn't go up the hill in order to get that, well, both the height advantage and get rid of the radar, although I don't know if they were aware of it. I don't think they are aware of the radar, but still. Going uphill. Generally speaking, if you have a safe way of going uphill, take it. Because it would have been far uh, easier to defend up that hill. Uh, it was a nice try, but in the end, he, uh, no, those he's only guys... killing bandits. He managed to take a max and a constructor, but those army wise, he lost a lot. I, I just Kane had the right idea by holding back in the first place, but that attack, like I said, that was a suicide mission. All 12 yeah. of those, they were doomed to die. They were moving forward to their deaths. Well, but he, he got some momentum with it. Um, he got the entire bit. Seal Flesset's yes. army to retreat, so he got some space in the middle of the map. He hasn't really used it to move constructors forward. But. And that, unfortunately, um, gave Flaccid a lot of medals. So right now, Flaccid, thanks to that reclaim, I think is... Yeah, the yeah. Reclaim is giving a little bit of an advantage, but honestly, it's going to be huge. Yeah, it's only dedicated to one con. Yeah, once, re area. once Flaccid really starts deciding to pull in Reclaim, that's going to shift the economy way into Flaccid's favor. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much Reclaim? Let's see, double check the Reclaim count. There is... Actually, it's not that not that much. It'll be like 10 seconds worth of Reclaim. If they go with all the constructors they have now. Like 15, 20 seconds otherwise. But yeah, there they go. With all the Reclaim going forward... Look like it looks like it will be ten build power worth of reclaim. That is still going to be a pretty big jump, though. And we got a warrior doing some work, as it should. Very good point. Very good use by Kane. Looks like Flaccid is not going to be going for the type counter. Just going straight in, trying to basically deal with the fact that Kane has not protected anything but that one point, and Flaccid. Although they were spread out, it's actually starting to pay off as Kane has no defense. If you to look the north. at the. Uh... The way he moves his units, he has Ctrl Z, that's Ctrl Z. All his units drag the line to the right side of the map and it's attacking that way. Yep. And but they're on fight order, so they are being a little bit more intelligent, not having to worry about micromanaging them too much. Although Kane. Kane doing some nice, some decent glaive micro, but honestly, that's not the concern. That is far from the concern. These glaives, they're taking care of the reinforcements. Losing their own lives in the process, but at the same time, Flaccid has very nearly taken over Kane's main base. I mean, Kane has gone for the air switch. They do have the Ravens, but they don't have they don't have Phoenixes. They don't have any Thunderbirds. Admittedly, I wouldn't use Thunderbirds against this, but Phoenixes would make sense. The Bandits they just need to move south, and that's about it. And I think once Kane realizes that they are going to move south, and that will be it. There are two air factories. Oh, the yeah. second one is being Flaccid built. Let's is put it that just way. now going for their own air factory switch, but that's not going to matter. Yeah, oh, but Flaccid also has a lot of more income now. Oh, I think he can finish it with Bandits alone. Oh yeah, no, no, I, that's what I mean, is that Flaccid is, at this point, has basically won. And, yep, well, Kane throws in the towel, that is game! Very, GG. very short game on what looks like a smaller map than it actually looks like, and I also notice it also has a nice SSMF, which it would, because it's an Evolution RTS map, and Forb has a very good eye for aesthetics. Indeed, he does. Yeah, Foreboding Angel. Very good map maker as far, at least aesthetically, and this map is well it seems well designed too. So yeah. Definitely Definitely was an interesting pick. I'm glad we saw that. And now we're gonna go into Intersection, a much drabber map because no, sorry, not intersection. Whatever it's the loser's pick. That's right. Intersection <laughs> is round two. This is best of three. I should point that out. This is best of three. So we'll get to that once Kane decides what map they want to play on, which I honestly don't know what they're gonna go for. Oh, now I do. It is going to be Avalanche. Very quickly deciding. Very, very decisive. I like that. Makes the tournament go faster. So we are going to see Avalanche. Small map. Kane apparently more confident on the smaller maps, which I'm not surprised by. This was a larger map, and it did not work for them. At all. Mm-hmm. Who's KKK? Okay, drink okay. every time someone plane switch. Dude, I would die if I drank every time someone did a plane switch. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we're talking water, but even then I'd probably die. I, no, I'd still die. I'd, I mean, it'd be a bit different and end up dying of water toxicity, but, you know, I'd die nonetheless. <laughs> Alcohol's just a bit more dramatic. Yeah. I mean, you really want me to be... I mean, I'd be drunk before we get to round two. Mind you, I'd never drink, so I actually have no idea how long it would be before I start getting tipsy. 
All right, Let's so yeah, see. Blasted and Kane, that's the first one, and I think we have other games going on too. I'm gonna double check because I have no idea. When I restarted the lobby, I lost tournament chat. It looks like almost everyone is here. Yogstoth is not, but... and Shady Beer isn't. Though neither is Lowry. Oh no, Lowry is here, never mind. That's there slander of me. Yeah, LD50 of water exists. Thank you, Anarchid. I, like I said, there is a lethal dose of water. I'm pretty sure I would reach that if I had a drink for every plane factory. With water. Let alone with any actual alcohol. I think there's also a lethal dose of train. Of what? Of train. Of train? Yes. For example, if you uh, stand on a on a railway, and a train oh, comes. Oh yeah, running yes. In. That's I'm thinking. Isn't any dose of train a lethal <laughs> dose of train? That seems pretty self-explanatory. When I'm on the train, it usually isn't. Oh well, yeah, that's true. It's just the train usually stops before that happens. But it's not a yeah. dose of train. You aren't applying the train to your body. You're going into the train. There's a bit of a difference. Uh, that, that makes sense. But... I mean, I realize it's a minor technical difference, but it makes all the difference in the world. The difference okay. between being able to go to work nicely and being a smear on the ground. Anyway, we're going to start. We're on Avalanche. It is a map I've shown several times before. Very thin map. As the main focus is the center line here. Whoever wins this tends to win. However, the south side is also a massive focus, and the north side, you see a little bit of focus, but not usually very much. It's typically only used for getting around the center if the center has been taken. Blasted going very quickly for shield bots, and Kane for Cloaky, the same matchup as last time. Kane, however, going for a bit of a hard read with the early warrior, not even bothering with the raider game, assuming that Flaccid is going to go heavy on the bandits, as a correct assumption, by the way, and grabbing that warrior to counter that directly, though they probably want to avoid that dirtbag, is the dirtbag going to see the warrior? I don't think so. It is not. The warrior is not known, and Kane is going to be able to get away with this. Oh, well, okay, no, they aren't because the second warrior has been revealed, so never mind. That was completely wrong. However, Flaccid, are they going to change to rogues? That's the real question. Because it is yeah. unusual. The, the early warrior like that, that is not something you see very often. Or ever. Well, you can do it. I... I Use it a lot, actually. Oh yeah, it's a great idea because you're assuming your opponent's going to go. But this later. is very, very uh, early. <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> unusual. Like starting with warrior is that is assuming your opponent's going to go raider, which is a safe assumption. It's just one of those things that you know it's a safe assumption right now oh. because everyone does go raider. Ooh. But that beam laser Ouch. really. Well, yeah, you need here. at least two warriors to kill a commander, and that's actually an econ commander against a strike commander. You probably need three. Or is this? Yes, yeah, a strike. So, like I said, warrior is a good idea. However, the rogue might come in, and at that point, I mean, people starting with warriors, that could mean people starting with rogues and rockos, and then you get this little early game RPS thing. But wow, Kane is being aggressive. They've already up they going for recon count too against Strikecom. This is unusual, but yeah, if you want to do this, you usually pick a battle commander. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't. I mean, the recon comp does have the escape option. It can jump. But that is still kind yeah. of risky, and I do not see Kane easily getting out of this. They're going to have to micro their butts off in order to be able to get through this. I mean, they have... I don't think he can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at this point, they even already have less health. Oh, yeah, they, they have way out, less health. Uh... They're going to die. Their commander is dead. And <clears throat> Flash's commander is not going to get on the process. Kane dies, loses all their economy, and that is... Well, that was quick. <laughs> Forget taking the center. That was just... That was a rush. That was an all-in rush. And it did not work out for Kane, so Flaccid exactly. takes that 2-0. Oh, and it looks like Auto War is going to be out. And apparently they need to sleep. Well, I can sympathize. What time is it over there? Well, Auto War, I believe, is also in North America, so it's going to be anywhere between 1 and 5 a.m. Uh, I see. Actually, 1 and 5.30, but I doubt they're in Newfoundland. Anyway... So yeah, anyway, so thanks for what thanks for coming anyway, Auto War. I mean, thank you for being here on time despite not realizing what's going on. And have fun at your sister's wedding. Yeah, that's also important. <laughs> yeah. So Blasted, 2-0 against Kane going against Dein Freund. And Dein Freund. Dein Freund? Dein Freund. I was right the first time! Yes! My German pronunciation is getting better. I think. <laughs> 
But then again, that's... If I'm going off of you, that means that my Dutch pronunciation is getting better, not necessarily my German pronunciation. Oh, well, Dutch and German is pretty close. It is pretty close, that's true. Anyway, Dying Throne is going to be here at some point. <laughs> Okamoko, like ninja movies with Bruce Lee, all moves need to charge together, not one at a time. This is true. This is how the Raider game works. Actually, this is how most of the game works, is that things need to charge together, unless you want to make sure that you're not going to lose. I mean, it's a bit of a tricky balance, because you want to make sure you don't actually lose out on what's going on. I mean, if you lose too many units, that gives it to your opponent. Your opponent can just come back. Yes, yes, yes. 